Preface of the Nursery Alice. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. The Nursery Alice by Lewis Carroll. Preface Addressed to Any Mother. I have reason to believe that Alice's Adventures in Wonderland has been read by some hundreds of English children, aged from five to fifteen also by children aged from fifteen to twenty-five, yet again by children aged from twenty-five to thirty-five, and even by children, for there are such, children in whom no waning of health and strength, no weariness of the solemn mockery and the gaudy glitter and the hopeless misery of life has availed to parch the pure fountain of joy that wells up in all childlike hearts, children of a certain age whose tale of years must be left untold and buried in respectful silence and my ambition now is is it a vain one to be read by children aged from naught to five to be read nay not so say rather to be thumbed to be cooed over to be dog's eared to be rumpled to be kissed by the illiterate ungrammatical dimpled darlings that fill your nursery with merry uproar and your inmost heart of hearts with a restful gladness such for instance as a child i once knew who having been carefully instructed that one of any earthly thing was enough for any little girl and that to ask for two buns two oranges two of anything would certainly bring upon her the awful charge of being greedy was found one morning sitting up in bed solemnly regarding her two little naked feet and murmuring to herself softly and penitently deedee Dee. eastertide eighteen eighty nine end of preface Chapter One of the Nursery Alice by Lewis Carroll. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. The White Rabbit. Once upon a time, there was a little girl called Alice, and she had a very curious dream. Would you like to hear what it was that she dreamed about? Well, this is the first thing that happened. A white rabbit came running by in a great hurry, and just as it passed Alice, it stopped and took its watch out of its pocket wasn't that a funny thing did you ever see a rabbit that had a watch and a pocket to put it in of course when a rabbit has a watch it must have a pocket to put it in it would never do to carry it about in its mouth and it wants its hands sometimes to run about with hasn't it got pretty pink eyes i think all white rabbits have pink eyes and pink ears and a nice brown coat and you can just see its red pocket handkerchief peeping out of its coat pocket and what with its blue necktie and its yellow waistcoat it really is very nicely dressed oh dear oh dear said the rabbit i shall be too late what would it be too late for i wonder well you see it had to go and visit the duchess you'll see a picture of the duchess soon sitting in her kitchen and the duchess was a very cross old lady and the rabbit knew she'd be very angry indeed if he kept her waiting so the poor thing was as frightened as frightened could be. Don't you see how he's trembling? Just shake the book a little from side to side, and you'll soon see him tremble. Because he thought the Duchess would have his head cut off for a punishment. That was what the Queen of Hearts used to do when she was angry with people. You'll see a picture of her soon. At least she used to order their heads to be cut off. And she always thought it was done. Though they never really did it. And so, when the white rabbit ran away, Alice wanted to see what would happen to it. So she ran after it, and she ran, and she ran, till she tumbled right down the rabbit hole. And then she had a very long fall indeed, down and down and down, till she began to wonder if she was going right through the world so as to come out on the other side. It was just like a very deep well, only there was no water in it. If anybody really had such a fall as that, it would kill them, most likely. But, you know, it doesn't hurt a bit to fall in a dream, because all the time you think you're falling, you really are lying somewhere safe and sound and fast asleep. However, this terrible fall came to an end at last, and down came Alice on a heap of sticks and dry leaves. But she wasn't a bit hurt, and up she jumped and ran after the rabbit again. 
and so that was the beginning of alice's curious dream and next time you see a white rabbit try and fancy you're going to have a curious dream just like dear little alice end of chapter one Chapter Two of the Nursery Alice by Lewis Carroll. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. How Alice Grew Tall. And so, after Alice had tumbled down the rabbit hole and had run a long, long way underground, all of a sudden she found herself in a great hall with doors all around it. But all the doors were locked, so you see, poor Alice couldn't get out of the hall, and that made her very sad. However, after a little while she came to a little table, all made of glass, with three legs. There are two of the legs in the picture, and just the beginning of the other leg. Do you see? And on the table was a little key, and she went around the hall and tried if she could unlock any of the doors with it. Poor Alice! The key wouldn't unlock any of the doors. But at last she came upon a tiny little door, and oh, how glad she was when she found the key would fit it. So she unlocked the tiny little door, and she stooped down and looked through it. And what do you think she saw? Oh, such a beautiful garden! And she did so long to go into it, but the door was far too small. She couldn't squeeze herself through any more than you could squeeze yourself into a mouse hole. So poor little Alice locked up the door and took the key back to the table again, and this time she found quite a new thing on it. Now look at the picture again. What do you think it was? It was a little bottle with a label tied to it, with the words, Drink Me, on the label. So she tasted it, and it was very nice. So she set to work and drank it up. And then such a curious thing happened to her. You'll never guess what it was, so I shall have to tell you. She got smaller and smaller, till at last she was just the size of a little doll. Then she said to herself, Now I'm the right size to get through the little door. And away she ran. But when she got there, the door was locked, and the key was on the top of the table, and she couldn't reach it. Wasn't it a pity she had locked up the door again? Well, the next thing she found was a little cake, and it had the words, Eat Me, marked on it. So, of course, she set to work and ate it up. And then, what do you think happened to her? No, you'll never guess. I shall have to tell you again. She grew, and she grew, and she grew, taller than she was before, taller than any child, taller than any grown-up person, taller and taller and taller. Just look at the picture and you'll see how tall she got. Which would you have liked the best, do you think? To be a little tiny Alice, no larger than a kitten, or a great tall Alice, with your head always knocking against the ceiling? End of chapter 2 Chapter Three of the Nursery Alice by Lewis Carroll. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. The Pool of Tears. Perhaps you think Alice must have been very much pleased when she had eaten the little cake to find herself growing so tremendously tall, because of course it would be easy enough now to reach the little key off the glass table and to open the little tiny door. Well, of course she could do that. But what good was it to get the door open when she couldn't get through? She was worse off than ever, poor thing. She could just manage by putting her head down close to the ground to look through with one eye. But that was all she could do. No wonder the poor tall child sat down and cried as if her heart would break. So she cried and she cried, and her tears ran down the middle of the hall like a deep river and very soon there was quite a large pool of tears reaching halfway down the hall. And there she might have stayed till this very day, if the white rabbit hadn't happened to come through the hall on his way to visit the Duchess. He was dressed up as grand as grand could be, and he had a pair of white kid gloves in one hand and a little fan in the other hand, 
and he kept on muttering to himself oh the duchess the duchess oh won't she be savage if i've kept her waiting but he didn't see alice you know so when she began to say if you please sir her voice seemed to come from the top of the hall because her head was so high up and the rabbit was dreadfully frightened and he dropped the gloves and the fan and ran away as hard as he could go then a very curious thing indeed happened alice took up the fan and began to fan herself with it and lo and behold she got quite small again and all in a minute she was just about the size of a mouse now look at the picture and you'll soon guess what happened next it looks just like the sea doesn't it but it really is the pool of tears all made of alice's tears you know and alice has tumbled into the pool and the mouse has tumbled in and there they are swimming about together doesn't alice look pretty as she swims across the picture you can just see her blue stockings far away under the water but why is the mouse swimming away from alice in such a hurry well the reason is that alice began talking about cats and dogs and a mouse always hates talking about cats and dogs suppose you were swimming about in a pool of your own tears and suppose somebody began talking to you about lesson books and bottles of medicine wouldn't you swim away as hard as you could go End of chapter 3「The Caucus Race」When Alice and the Mouse had got out of the pool of tears, of course they were very wet, and so were a lot of other curious creatures that had tumbled in as well. There was a dodo, that's the great bird in front leaning on a walking stick, and a duck, and a lorry, that's just behind the duck looking over its head and an eaglet that's on the left-hand side of the lorry and several others well and so they didn't know how in the world they were going to get dry again but the dodo who was a very wise bird told them the right way was to have a caucus race and what do you think that was you don't know well you are an ignorant child now be very attentive and i'll soon cure you of your ignorance first you must have a race course it ought to be a sort of circle but it doesn't much matter what shape it is so long as it goes a good way around and joins on to itself again then you must put all the racers on the course here and there it doesn't matter where so long as you don't crowd them too much together then you needn't say one two three in a way but let them all set off running just when they like and leave off just when they like so all these creatures alice and all went on running round and round till they were all quite dry again and then the dodo said everybody won and everybody must have prizes of course alice had to give them their prizes and she had nothing to give them but a few comfits she happened to have in her pocket and there was just one apiece all around and there was no prize for alice so what do you think they did alice had nothing left but her thimble now look at the picture and you'll see what happened hand it over here said the dodo then the dodo took the thimble and handed it back to alice and said we beg your acceptance of this elegant thimble and then all the other creatures cheered wasn't that a curious sort of present to give her suppose they wanted to give you a birthday present would you rather they should go to your toy cupboard and pick out your nicest doll and say here my love here's a lovely birthday present for you or would you rather them to give you something new something that didn't belong to you before end of chapter four chapter five of the nursery alice by lewis carroll this LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Bill the Lizard Now I'm going to tell you about Alice's adventures in the White Rabbit's house. 
Do you remember how the rabbit dropped his gloves and his fan when he was so frightened at hearing Alice's voice that seemed to come down from the sky? Well, of course he couldn't go to visit the Duchess without his gloves and his fan, so after a bit he came back again to look for them. By this time the dodo and all the other curious creatures had gone away, and Alice was wandering about all alone. So what do you think he did? Actually, he thought she was his housemaid and began ordering her about. Mary Ann, he said, go home this very minute and fetch me a pair of gloves and a fan. Quick now! Perhaps he couldn't see very clearly with his pink eyes, for I'm sure Alice doesn't look very like a housemaid does she however she was a very good-natured little girl so wasn't a bit offended but ran off to the rabbit's house as quick as she could it was lucky she found the door open for if she had had to ring i suppose the real mary ann would have come to open the door and she would never have let alice come in and i'm sure it was very lucky she didn't meet the real mary ann as she trotted upstairs for i'm afraid she would have taken alice for a robber so at last she found her way into the rabbit's room, and there was a pair of gloves lying on the table, and she was just going to take them up and go away when she happened to see a little bottle on the table. And of course it had the words, Drink me, on the label. And of course Alice drank some. Well, I think that was rather lucky too, don't you? for if she hadn't drunk any all this wonderful adventure that i'm going to tell you about wouldn't have happened at all and wouldn't that have been a pity you're getting so used to alice's adventures that i dare say you can guess what happened next if you can't i'll tell you she grew and she grew and she grew and in a very short time the room was full of alice just in the same way as a jar is full of jam there was Alice all the way up to the ceiling, and Alice in every corner of the room. The door opened inward, so of course there wasn't any room to open it, so when the rabbit got tired of waiting and came to fetch his gloves for himself, of course he couldn't get in. So what do you think he did? Now we come to the picture. He sent Bill the lizard up to the roof of the house and told him to get down the chimney. But Alice happened to have one of her feet in the fireplace, so when she heard Bill coming down the chimney, she just gave a little tiny kick, and away went Bill, flying up into the sky. Poor little Bill. Don't you pity him very much? How frightened he must have been. End of chapter 5《ハッピーバースデー》ありがとうございました。ありがとうございました。ありがとうございました。ありがとうございました。ありがとうございました。ありがとうございました。ありがとうございました。ありがとうございました。ありがとうございました。ありがとうございました。ありがとうございました。ありがとうございました。ありがとうございました。ありがとうございました。ありがとうございました。ありがとうございました。ありがとうございました。ありがとうございました。ありがとうございました。ありがとうございました。ありがとうございました。ありがとうございました。ありがとうございました。ありがとうございました。ありがとうございました。ありがとうございました。ありがとうございました。ありがとうございました。ありがとうございました。ありがとうございました。ありがとうございました。ありがとうございました。ありがとうございました。ありがとうございました。ありがとうございました。ありがとうございました。ありがとうございました。ありがとうございました。ありがとうございました。ありがとうございました。ありがとうございました。ありがとうございました。ありがとうございました。ありがとうございました。ありがとうございました。ありがとうございました。ありがとうございました。ありがとうございました。ありがとうございました。You can see she was a little afraid of it all the time because she's got behind that great thistle for fear it should run over her. That would have been just about as bad for her as it would be for you to be run over by a wagon and four horses. Have you got a little pet puppy at your home? If you have, I hope you are always kind to it and give it nice things to eat. Once upon a time, I knew some little children about as big as you, and they had a little pet dog of their own. And it was called Dash. And this is what they told me about its birthday treat. Do you know, one day we remembered it was Dash's birthday that day. So we said, let's give Dash a nice birthday treat, like what we have on our birthdays. So we thought and we thought. Now, what is it we like best of all on our birthdays? And we thought and we thought. And at last we all called out together. 
why it's oatmeal porridge of course so of course we thought dash would be quite sure to like it very much too so we went to the cook and we got her to make a saucer full of nice oatmeal porridge and then we called dash into the house and we said now dash you're going to have your birthday treat we expected dash would jump for joy but it didn't one bit so we put the saucer down before it and we said now dash don't be greedy eat it nicely like a good dog so dash just tasted it with the tip of his tongue and then it made oh such a horrid face and then do you know it did hate it so it wouldn't eat a bit more of it so we had to put it all down its throat with a spoon i wonder if alice will give this little puppy some porridge i don't think she can because she hasn't got any with her i can't see any saucer in the picture End of chapter 6Chapter 7 of The Nursery Alice by Lewis Carroll. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. The Blue Caterpillar. Would you like to know what happened to Alice after she had got away from the puppy? It was far too large an animal, you know, for her to play with. I don't suppose you would much enjoy playing with a young hippopotamus, would you? You would always be expecting to be crushed as flat as a pancake under its great heavy feet. So Alice was very glad to run away while it wasn't looking. Well, she wandered up and down, and she didn't know what in the world to do to make herself grow up to the right size again. Of course, she knew that she had to eat or drink something. That was the regular rule, you know. But she couldn't guess what thing. However, she soon came to a great mushroom that was so tall that she couldn't see over the top of it without standing on tiptoe. And what do you think she saw? something that I'm sure you never talked to in all your life. It was a large blue caterpillar. I'll tell you soon what Alice and the caterpillar talked about, but first let us have a good look at the picture. That curious thing standing in front of the caterpillar is called a hookah, and it's used for smoking. The smoke comes through that long tube that winds round and round like a serpent. And do you see its long nose and chin? At least they look exactly like a nose and chin, don't they? But they really are two of its legs. You know, a caterpillar has got quantities of legs. You can see some more of them further down. What a bother it must be to a caterpillar counting over such a lot of legs every night to make sure it hasn't lost any of them. And another great bother must be having to settle which leg it had better move first. I think if you had forty or fifty legs, and if you wanted to go a walk, You'd be such a time in settling which leg to begin with that you'd never go a walk at all. And what did Alice and the Caterpillar talk about, I wonder? Well, Alice told it how very confusing it was being first one size, then another, and the Caterpillar asked her if she liked the size she was just then. And Alice said she would like to be just a little bit larger. Three inches was such a wretched height to be. Just mark off three inches on the wall, about the length of your middle finger, and you'll see what size she was. And the caterpillar told her one side of the mushroom would make her grow taller, and the other side would make her grow shorter. So Alice took two little bits of it with her to nibble, and managed to make herself quite a nice comfortable height before she went on to visit the Duchess. End of chapter 7 Chapter 8 of The Nursery Alice by Lewis Carroll. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. The Pig Baby. Would you like to hear about Alice's visit to the Duchess? It was a very interesting visit indeed, I can assure you. Of course, she knocked at the door to begin with, but nobody came, so she had to open it for herself. Now, if you look at the picture, you'll see exactly what Alice saw when she got inside. The door led right into the kitchen, you see. The Duchess sat in the middle of the room nursing the baby. The baby was howling. The soup was boiling. The cook was stirring the soup. The cat, it was a Cheshire cat, was grinning as Cheshire cats always do. All these things were happening just as Alice went in. The Duchess has a beautiful cap and gown, hasn't she? 
but I'm afraid she hasn't got a very beautiful face. The baby, well, I dare say you've seen several nicer babies than that, and more good temper ones, too. However, take a good look at it, and we'll see if you know it again next time you meet it. The cook, well, you may have seen nicer cooks once or twice, but I'm nearly sure you've never seen a nicer cat. Now have you? And wouldn't you like to have a cat of your own, just like that one, with lovely green eyes and smiling so sweetly? The Duchess was very rude to Alice, and no wonder why she even called her own baby Pig. And it wasn't a pig, was it? And she ordered the cook to chop off Alice's head, though of course the cook didn't do it, and at last she threw the baby at her. So Alice caught the baby and took it away with her, and I think that was about the best thing she could do. So she wandered away through the wood, carrying the ugly little thing with her. And a great job it was to keep hold of it, it wriggled about so. But at last she found out that the proper way was to keep tight hold of its left foot and its right ear. But don't you try to hold on to a baby like that, my child. There are not many babies that like being nursed in that way. Well, and so the baby kept grunting and grunting, so that Alice had to say to it quite seriously, If you're going to turn into a pig, my dear, I'll have nothing more to do with you. Mind now. And at last she looked down into its face, and what do you think had happened to it? Look at the picture and see if you can guess. Why, that's not the baby Alice was nursing, is it? I knew you wouldn't know it again, though I told you to take a good look at it. Yes, it is the baby, and it's turned into a little pig. So Alice put it down and let it trot away into the wood, and she said to herself, It was a very ugly baby, but it makes a rather handsome pig, I think. Don't you think she was right? End of chapter 8「of the Nursery Alice by Lewis Carroll. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. The Cheshire Cat All alone, all alone, poor Alice. No baby, not even a pig, to keep her company. So you may be sure she was very glad indeed when she saw the Cheshire Cat perched up in a tree over her head. The cat has a very nice smile, no doubt, but just look what a lot of teeth it's got. Isn't Alice just a little shy of it? Well, yes, a little. But then it couldn't help having teeth, you know, and it could have helped smiling, supposing it had been cross. So on the whole, she was glad. Doesn't Alice look very prim, holding her head so straight up, and with her hands behind her, just as if she were going to say her lessons to the cat? And that reminds me, there's a little lesson I want to teach you while we're looking at the picture of Alice and the cat. Now, don't be in a bad temper about it, my dear child. It's a very little lesson indeed. Do you see that foxglove growing close to the tree? And do you know why it's called a foxglove? Perhaps you think it's got something to do with a fox. No, indeed. Foxes never wear gloves. The right word is folks glove. Did you ever hear that fairies used to be called the good folk? Now we've finished the lesson, and we'll wait a minute till you've got your temper again. Well, do you feel quite good-natured again? No temper ache? No crossness about the corners of the mouth? Then we'll go on. Cheshire Puss, said Alice. Wasn't that a pretty name for a cat? Would you tell me which way I ought to go from here? And so the Cheshire Cat told her which way she ought to go, if she wanted to visit the Hatter and which way to go to visit the March Hare. "'They're both mad,' said the cat. And then the cat vanished away, just like the flame of a candle when it goes out. So Alice set off to visit the March Hare. And as she went along, there was the cat again. And she told it she didn't like it coming and going so quickly. So this time the cat vanished quite slowly, beginning with the tail and ending with the grin." 
wasn't that a curious thing a grin without any cat would you like to see one if you turn up the corner of this leaf you'll have alice looking at the grin and she doesn't look a bit more frightened than when she was looking at the cat does she end of chapter nine Chapter Ten of the Nursery Alice by Lewis Carroll. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. The Mad Tea Party. This is the Mad Tea Party. You see, Alice had left the Cheshire Cat and had gone off to see the March Hare and the Hatter, as the Cheshire Cat had advised her, and she found them having tea under a great tree with a dormouse sitting between them. There were only those three at the table, but there were quantities of teacups set all along it. You can't see all the table, you know, and even in the bit you can see, there are nine cups, counting the one the March Hare has got in his hand. That's the March Hare, with the long ears and straws mixed up with his hair. The straws showed he was mad. I don't know why. Never twist up straws among your hair, for fear people should think you're mad. There was a nice green armchair at the end of the table that looked as if it was just meant for Alice so she went and sat down in it then she had quite a long talk with the march hare and the hatter the dormouse didn't say much you see it was fast asleep generally and it only just woke up for a moment now and then as long as it was asleep it was very useful to the march hare and the hatter because it had a nice round soft head just like a pillow so they could put their elbows on it and lean across it and talk to each other quite comfortably. You wouldn't like people to use your head for a pillow, would you? But if you were fast asleep like the Dormouse, you wouldn't feel it, so I suppose you wouldn't care about it. I'm afraid they gave Alice very little to eat and drink. However, after a bit, she helped herself to some tea and bread and butter. Only I don't quite see where she got the bread and butter and she had no plate for it. Nobody seems to have a plate except the Hatter. I believe the March Hare must have had one as well, because when they all moved one place on, that was the rule at this curious tea party, and Alice had to go into the place of the March Hare, she found he had just upset the milk jug into his plate, so I suppose his plate and the milk jug are hidden behind that large teapot. The Hatter used to carry about hats to sell, and even the one that he's got on his head is meant to be sold. You see, it's got its price marked on it. A ten and a six. That means ten shillings and sixpence. Wasn't that a funny way of selling hats? And hasn't he got a beautiful necktie on? Such a lovely yellow tie with large red spots. He has just got up to say to Alice, Your hair wants cutting. That was a rude thing to say, wasn't it? And do you think her hair does want cutting? I think it's very pretty length, just the right length. End of chapter 10 Chapter 11 of The Nursery Alice by Lewis Carroll This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. The Queen's Garden this is a little bit of the beautiful garden I told you about. You see, Alice had managed at last to get quite small, so that she could go through the little door. I suppose she was about as tall as a mouse, if it stood on its hind legs. So, of course, this was a very tiny rose tree, and these are very tiny gardeners. What funny little men they are! But are they men, do you think? I think they must be live cards, with just a head and arms and legs so as to look like little men. And what are they doing with that red paint, I wonder? Well, you see, this is what they told Alice. The Queen of Hearts wanted to have a red rose tree just in that corner, and these poor little gardeners had made a great mistake and had put in a white one instead, and they were so frightened about it because the Queen was sure to be angry and then she would order all their heads to be cut off. She was a dreadfully savage queen, and that was the way she always did when she was angry with people. Off with their heads! They didn't really cut their heads off, you know, because nobody ever obeyed her, but 
that was what she always said now can't you guess what the poor little gardeners are trying to do they're trying to paint the roses red and they're in a great hurry to get it done before the queen comes and then perhaps the queen won't find out it was a white rose tree to begin with and then perhaps the little men won't get their heads cut off you see there were five large white roses on the tree such a job to get them all painted red but they've got three and a half done now and if only they wouldn't stop to talk work away little men do work away or the queen will be coming before it's done and if she finds any white roses on the tree do you know what will happen it will be off with their heads oh work away my little men hurry hurry the queen has come and isn't she angry oh my poor little alice End of chapter 11chapter 12 of the nursery alice by lewis carroll this librivox recording is in the public domain the lobster quadrille did you ever play at croquet there are large wooden balls painted with different colors that you have to roll about and arches of wire that you have to send them through and great wooden mallets with long handles to knock the balls about with now look at the picture and you'll see that alice has just been playing a game of croquet but she couldn't play with that great red what's-its-name in her arms why how could she hold the mallet why my dear child that great red what's-its-name its real name is a flamingo is the mallet in this croquet game the balls were live hedgehogs you know a hedgehog can roll itself up into a ball and the mallets were live flamingos so Alice is just resting from the game for a minute to have a chat with that dear old thing, the Duchess. And, of course, she keeps her mallet under her arm so as not to lose it. But I don't think she was a dear old thing one bit. To call her baby a pig and to want to chop off Alice's head? Oh, that was only a joke about chopping off Alice's head. And as to the baby, why, it was a pig, you know. And just look at her smile. Why, it's wider than all Alice's head, and yet you can only see half of it. Well, they'd only had a very little chat when the queen came and took Alice away to see the griffin and the mock turtle. You don't know what a griffin is? Well, do you know anything? That's the question. However, look at the picture. That creature with a red head and red claws and green scales is the griffin. Now you know and the others the mock turtle it's got a calf's head because calf's head is used to make mock turtle soup now you know but what are they doing going round and round alice like that why i thought of course you'd know that they're dancing a lobster quadrille and next time you meet a griffin and a mock turtle i dare say they'll dance it for you if you ask them prettily only don't let them come quite close, or they'll be treading on your toes as they did on poor Alice's. End of chapter 12 Chapter 13 of The Nursery Alice by Lewis Carroll This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Who Stole the Tarts? Did you ever hear how the Queen of Hearts made some tarts, and can you tell me what became of them why of course i can doesn't the song tell all about it the queen of hearts she made some tarts all on a summer day the knave of hearts he stole those tarts and took them quite away well yes the song says so but it would never do to punish the poor knave just because there was a song about him they had to take him prisoner and put chains on his wrists and bring him before the king of hearts so that there might be a regular trial now if you look at the big picture at the beginning of this book you'll see what a grand thing a trial is when the judge is a king the king is very grand isn't he but he doesn't look very happy i think that big crown on the top of his wig must be very heavy and uncomfortable 
but he had to wear them both you see so that people might know he was a judge and a king and doesn't the queen look cross she can see the dish of tarts on the table that she had taken such trouble to make and she could see the bad knave do you see the chains hanging from his wrists that stole them away from her so i don't think it's any wonder if she does feel a little cross the white rabbit is standing near the king reading out the song to tell everybody what a bad knave he is and the jury you can just see two of them up in the jury box the frog and the duck have to settle whether he's guilty or not guilty now i'll tell you about the accident that happened to alice you see she was sitting close by the jury box and she was called as a witness you know what a witness is a witness is a person who has seen the prisoner do whatever he's accused of or at any rate knows something that's important in the trial but alice hadn't seen the queen make the tarts and she hadn't seen the knave take the tarts and in fact she didn't know anything about it so why in the world they wanted her to be a witness i'm sure i can't tell you anyhow they did want her and the white rabbit blew his big trumpet and shouted out alice and so alice jumped up in a great hurry and then and then what do you think happened why her skirt caught against the jury box and tipped it over and all the poor little jurors came tumbling out of it let's try if we can make out all the twelve you know there ought to be twelve to make up a jury i see the frog and the dormouse and the rat and the ferret and the hedgehog and the lizard and the bantam cock and the mole and the duck and the squirrel and the screaming bird with a long beak just behind the mole but that only makes eleven we must find one more creature oh do you see a little white head coming out behind the mole and just under the duck's beak oh that makes up twelve mr tenniel says the screaming bird is a storkling of course you know what that is and the little white head is a mouseling isn't it a little darling alice picked them all up again very carefully and i hope they weren't much hurt end of chapter thirteen chapter fourteen of the nursery alice by lewis carroll this librivox recording is in the public domain the shower of cards oh dear oh dear what is it all about and what's happening to alice well i'll tell you all about it as well as i can the way the trial ended was this the king wanted the jury to settle whether the knave of hearts was guilty or not guilty that means that they were to settle whether he had stolen the tarts or if somebody else had taken them but the wicked queen wanted to have his punishment settled first of all that wasn't at all fair was it because you know supposing he never took the tarts then of course he oughtn't to be punished would you like to be punished for something you hadn't done so alice said stuff and nonsense so the queen said off with her head just what she always said when she was angry so alice said who cares for you you're nothing but a pack of cards so they were all very angry and flew up into the air and came tumbling down again all over alice just like a shower of rain and i think you'll never guess what happened next the next thing was alice woke up out of her curious dream and she found that the cards were only some leaves off the tree that the wind had blown down upon her face wouldn't it be a nice thing to have a curious dream just like alice the best plan is this first lie down under a tree and wait till a white rabbit runs by with a watch in his hand then shut your eyes and pretend to be dear little alice good-bye alice dear good-bye the end of chapter fourteen recording by scotty smith end of the nursery alice by Lewis Carroll.